first of all, on the issue of critical race theory, et cetera, I'll, I'll obviously have to get much smarter on whatever the theory is. Um, but I do think it's important, actually, uh, for those of us in uniform to be open-minded and be widely read. And the United States Military Academy is a university. Uh, and it is important that we train and we understand. Uh, and I, I want to understand white rage. And I'm white. And I want to understand it. So what is it that caused thousands of people to assault this building and try to overturn the Constitution of the United States of America? What caused that? I want to find that out. I want to maintain an open mind here, and I do want to analyze it. It's important that we understand that because our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Guardians, they come from the American people. So it is important that the leaders, now and in the future, do understand it. I've read Mao Zedong. I've read, I've read Karl Marx. I've read Lenin. That doesn't make me a communist. So what is wrong with understanding, having some situational understanding about the country for which we are here to defend? And I personally find it offensive that we are accusing the United States military, our general officers, our commissioned, non-commissioned officers of being, quote, woke or something else because we're studying some theories that are out there. That was started at Harvard Law School years ago, and it proposed that there were laws in the United States, antebellum laws prior to the Civil War, that led to uh, a power differential with African Americans that were three quarters of a human being when this country was formed. And then we had a civil war and emancipation proclamation to change it. And we brought it up to the Civil Rights Act in 1964. It took another 100 years to change that. So look it, I do want to know. And I respect your service, and you and I are both Green Berets. But I want to know. And it matters to our military and the discipline and cohesion of this military. In my previous discussions with service members and particularly officers, I would hear about complaints over parts not arriving on time, long deployments, and in my more recent discussions with those officers, the number one issue that they raised to me with concern, often unable to speak publicly for fear of the type of retribution that Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer faced, they say that your stand down regarding extremism did not help our military, it hurt the military. And I, I want to share with you that perspective, that it caused service members to otherize one another, it impaired group cohesion. How should the Department of Defense think about critical race theory? Could I make a comment, uh, Secretary? I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm very limited on my time, General Millis. Well, I, I just want to make a comment. That the feedback well, I know, but I've, I've, gotten I, I've, I've asked the question to Secretary Austin. I don't know what the, what the issue of critical race theory is and what the relevance here uh, in with the department. We do not teach critical race theory. We don't, we don't embrace uh, critical race theory. And I think, I think that's a spurious uh, uh, conversation. And so we are focused on extremist behaviors and, and not, uh, not ideology, not, not, uh, not people's thoughts, not people's uh, uh, political orientation. Behaviors is what we're focused on. But and one final point, and thanks for your anecdotal uh, input, but I would say that I have gotten 10 times that amount of input, 50 times that amount of input uh, on the other side that have said, hey, we're, we're, we're glad to have had the ability to have a conversation with ourselves and with our leadership. And that's what we need to and, make and sure again, that we're And again, reclaiming my time, Mr. Secretary, it, it may be that you're receiving that input in the ratios you describe because it was your directive. I want to be very clear. The military needs to be open to all Americans. Absolutely. That is the strength of the United States military. But once we're in, we bleed green and our skin color is camouflage. We're worried about that American flag on our shoulder. That's the only thing our enemies are worried about. I think we can agree there. But the other thing that they raised to me was a seminar that over 100 cadets attended titled Understanding Whiteness and White Rage taught by a woman who described the Republican Party platform as a platform of white supremacy. This is going on at West Point as we speak to our future military leaders. And sir, I would encourage you, I would demand that you get to the bottom of what is going on in the force and further for what it means for civilian oversight of the military when our future military leaders are being taught that the, the Constitution and the fundamental civilian 
institutions of this country are endemically racist, misogynist, and colonialist, and therefore it is their duty to resist them. What does that mean for a future cadet who one day will be sitting where you are? This is not something that uh, the United States military is, is, uh, is embracing and pushing and, and causing people to subscribe to. Now, whether or not this was uh, some sort of uh, critical examination of different theories, I don't know. But we'll... We need to understand our past. I want to be very clear. But can you agree at least that understanding whiteness and white rage presented in Ike Hall over 100 cadets probably is something that we shouldn't be teaching uh, our, our future leaders of the United States Army? As you have described it, uh, it certainly sounds like that's something that should not, not occur. Again, I would like to know the specifics of, uh, of the... Thank you, Mr. Secretary.